Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. It's episode number 69, the supplemental midweek edition. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn about knives and knife collecting. Another uh, full, fun-filled episode this week, Bob, (laughs) to talk about a lot of uh, personal experiences with the Knife Junkie, but also some knife drops and uh, a favor to ask of our listeners. So uh, a lot lot on this uh, midweek edition of the Supplemental. I like the way you say fun-filled. It makes it sound like a Brady Brady Bunch (laughs) episode there. So coming up, we're going to talk about uh, knives, of course, and uh, starting out with uh, CRKT Ripple, but uh, not yeah. kind of the uh, traditional story we want to talk about this with, with this one. Yeah, no, no. This uh, A friend of mine uh, from work, I haven't seen him in years. He moved to Florida. He's coming back to the area. He's going to be working with us again. Great to see him. But he's like, Bob, I have a special mission for you. And he pulls his CRKT Ripple out of his pocket. Ripple is the... Uh, ball bearing pivoted Ken Onion designed CRKT that came out probably, I don't know, at least 10 years ago. And, uh, it's a, it's, it's like a low end high end knife or a high end low end knife. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's a great little knife. And, uh, he pulled it out of his pocket and he said, uh, my wife, I think she used it for a screwdriver. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh no. I don't even want to see it. He flips it open and, you know, sh- sure enough at the, Towards the tip of the blade, uh, and this is, what is this, uh, I think this is, uh, 8CR13, but, uh, towards the tip of the blade, there are all these gouges and, uh, and divots just dug out of the edge. So I am going to use this opportunity to pull out the KME, the, the knife sharpener that I got a few months back and did a couple of knives on, but got a little gun shy. I think I removed a little bit too much metal from a few knives. Uh, but I'm going to dial it back a little bit and I'm going to use my KME to resurrect this CRKT Ripple. It really is a fine knife. The Ripple you could get at one point at Lowe's and at Walmart and other places like that and uh, really had a few features that were before its time for a widespread distribution, like uh, chief among those, the uh, the ball bearing pivot. So It's always been a cool knife. And then all the extra milling on the handle. It's got an aluminum handle with all this crazy milling and it's got uh, skeletonized uh, liners. So it's a really great little knife. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to give it the full spa treatment DeMarco style. And I'm going to try and uh, not try. I'm going to use this KME sharpener to resurrect this blade. Mm -hmm. This Mm -hmm. once screwdriver future blade. And turn it back into a knife. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. I was so offended. I'm like, you know, people get offended a lot these days about things, and I try I try not to be offended by things. But this, I was like, really, there is a thing called a screwdriver. It's been around for like several hundred years at least. So go out and get one. Leave the knife for cutting. We haven't talked about this really in the podcast, and now we've talked about a lot, uh, you know, off air and, you know, as we're doing lunches and those kind of things. But uh, the knife sharpening, you know, I wanted to... to to chat with you about that. Maybe we can talk about that on a future episode to see how that's going and uh, maybe a new sideline for the Knife Junkie at some point. Sure, maybe. You know, Jim, I've, I've, I've always used the uh, Spyderco Sharp Maker, you know, with the range of stones from the coarse diamond grit to the super fine uh, ceramic uh, grit they have. And I can get a knife really beautifully sharp with those. But there's always the human element to it because it's not a, a fixed angle sharpener. So this KME that I that I got, uh, you know, it it does take a little bit more work than expected. Work meaning mm. doesn't take that much work to get a, a screaming sharp edge, but to get it nicely polished and even looking. And it takes a little bit more elbow grease than I thought going into it. So I want to get good at it on some of my cheaper knives, but I've gotten rid of most of those or many of those. <laughs> uh, oh, no. So it's <laughs> oh no. I have to I buy guess. some more <laughs> just to practice. <laughs> All right. So, you know, you know how I'm thinking. Did I help you justify that? You did. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. I can refer to minute 455 on this uh, <laughs> knife junkie 69 if I need right. to. 
All right. Well, talking about uh, kind of modifying knives, fixing knives, cleaning them up, making them more of your own, you know, your style mm-hmm. uh, to, to how you like them. Uh, serrated Delica that uh, you yes. received a little while back from uh, our buddy, our, our listener, Stu. Yep. Uh, you kind of did some slight modifications on that. And maybe modification is not the right word, but something to make it more your own. I did. I did. Uh, I'm sure Stu's getting sick of hearing his name, but I, I, I just want to <laughs> put this out there to say it has finally found its forever home, if you will. So this is now living on the inside left breast pocket of my jacket, which my winter jacket, it's a Duluth Trading Company. Uh, it's got this network of inside pockets that's pretty sweet. But every year, you know, I've, I've worn this model jacket for quite some time. And every year I put my Cold Steel Black Talon 2 on the inside pocket. I switch the clip over to the other side and I, I pop that in there. And that's a big, that's a, a four inch knife with a big, long, serrated S shaped blade. It's, it's not in any way something you could pull out and say, yes, officer, I need this for work. It's, it just looks like menace and, and anyway, I kept that in my coat for a long time, but now, I am keeping the serrated Delica in there. Uh, I switched the clip to the other side, to the uh, left-hand carry side, and I did the little zip-tie modification so that you can wave it open out of the pocket, which is something I I, I hesitate to do on a beautiful knife because it's kind of looks kind of cheesy having that plastic knife there. But, you know, I, I really think this is an emergency knife for whatever kind of emergency uh, situation. So I'm going to forego the aesthetics for now. I'm going to leave the zip tie on there, leave the clip on the left-hand side, and carry this on the inside left pocket of my winter jacket. Uh, if I ever need to, you know, cut myself out of a car, uh, out of a seatbelt, it'll be there. And uh, if I ever need to cut through someone's leather jacket, I have serrations. Mm. <laughs> you know, the... <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I can think of is a past Thursday Night Knives episode when uh, you guys were talking about that. You mentioned one of your most, I think it was your most, one of your most carried knives that you could use to cut ankles if you were in a gang fight or something like that. And the yeah. comment was, Bob, you must really get into a lot of trouble. So, <laughs> or, or have a big fantasy life. Yeah. I, it's more, it's way more the latter. Right. I don't, I, I just don't get in trouble. Right. I'm a nice guy. People like me. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> we'll tell some stories on an upcoming episode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Hey, I do want to uh, ask our listeners to do us a favor. Uh, we are planning a Christmas Day show, a special show that is all listeners. It's listener comments, listener questions, listener thoughts. You can call the listener line with a message, 724-466-4487. Let us know what you'd like for Christmas. Maybe you opened up something early. Maybe you bought something for yourself for Christmas. Let us know what that was. Let us know your most carried knife of 2019. Let us know your favorite knife. Tell us a knife story. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, we want to get your voice on the Christmas Day supplemental edition of the Knife Junkie podcast. So please call the listener line at 724-466-4487. We'd love to hear your voice. And, and again, please, you know, tell us your name. Tell us your YouTube channel. If you're a knife maker, knife manufacturer, please, you know, give us your website. Give us your Instagram account, whatever. Use that time to promote your business and yourself. But call the listener line with your thoughts. Now, if you don't want to be on with your voice, Bob says you can email him at bob at thenifejunkie.com. That's bob at thenifejunkie.com. And give us your email story, and we'll be glad to read it. So, uh, again, just just kind of a fun holiday show that we thought involving you, our listener. Yeah, and if you don't feel like reading it yourself, like we said, email us, and we'll read it in these silver tongues, and it will sound fantastic. Isn't that right, Jim? Uh, yes, I'll let Bob read that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got uh, Knife Life news coming up, and uh, we're going to be talking about several knives as well as Italian switchblades. But that's still to come here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life news. So I wanted to talk about uh, the CRKT Provoke Mor- uh, Morphing Karambit. Uh, this is a very famous karambit that came out uh, 
I think CRKT dropped it at the end of 2018, maybe early 2019. It's a Joe Caswell design. Joe Caswell uh, from California is known for his uh, incredible engineering in coming up with unique knife designs, unique mechanisms, unique locking uh, mechanisms, etc. And this morphing karambit is something he came up with uh, in his custom knives. You've seen it. You know what it looks like, but I'll describe it. You just hold it with the ring through your, with your forefinger through the ring. And then with your thumb, you just nudge a little piece of aluminum downward and the whole blade deploys. It sort of, uh, levers out on two levers and locks forward. And it looks like a very useful tool. Yeah. Uh, you can use it in an EDC roll to open boxes, et cetera, et cetera. Or you could flip it open and use it as a karambit. But the reason I'm bringing up the provoke is that, um, they have a new edition coming out for those of you Star Wars nerds. It's the Imperial edition. So it's in black and white and you can look like a stormtrooper while you carry your new Imperial edition CRKT provoke morph and karambit. It's a black and white Cerakote. So, uh, you know, it's a D2 blade and D2, it benefits from, from being, uh, coated and Cerakote is super strong. And of course you can color it. So you got your black and white. Imperial per- provoke karambit. <laughs> that was my Darth Vader impression, by the way. <laughs> That's right. I liked it. I like okay. it. It sounds good. Though the one thing I have to say is, if I were at CRKT and I were in charge of the provoke morphing karambit Imperial edition, I would have reversed the color scheme and made the uh, made the finger ring and the blade black. And then the rest of the works white because, you know, a big white, I shouldn't say it's, it's not big, but you know, the whole thing about a karambit is it's a sneaky weapon. So you, you'd rather have the blade black and harder to see than mm-hmm. white and easy to index visually. So that's my, my nerdy little critique. Maybe they'll have a sprint run with oh. your, <laughs> see how I'm <laughs> yes. learning the technology here or the uh, terminology. The inverse imperial, and it will have yes, the reverse colorway. I think that's cool. But, Suggested you know, they, by the knife junkie. <laughs> <laughs> but now you know you can expect uh, kind of like Microtech. I bet you can expect to see uh, a Mandalorian version where it's kind of mm. worn down green, and and you can probably expect to see an Imperial Guard version where it's all bright red. And yeah, so yeah, might as well. I, I'm not much of a Star Wars guy, but I, I kind of like the way they look. It took me a long time to watch the original Star Wars, and then when I did, I, I got into the series, and uh, I haven't watched the Mandalorian or uh, one or two of the the latest movies, but uh, I oh, definitely yeah. like the older ones. So, yeah, I do too. But when you mean, uh, when you say it took a long time to see the originals, do you mean like the original original? Original original, yeah. You, you didn't see it in 1977 when it came out? No, it probably took me a year or two to finally watch it. Oh, okay. So yeah. you still saw it in the seventies? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I think so. It might have been early eighties, but yeah. I mean, it. It. I was not one that uh, was like, you know, this is stupid. You know. Yeah. But then no, once no, no. I saw that, once I saw it, I was like, wow, this is awesome, and you know, yeah, couldn't wait for the next one. So yeah, I can remember lining up with my grandpa, million people. I was like, I don't know, well, six or so. Left quite an impression. Grandpa into it, or he just wanted to take you? No, no, no. He was cool. He was into it. He was into it for sure. Cool. All right. Well, speaking of being into it, you are into the Hogue Knives Deca. Yeah, I could be, Jim. I could be a big fan. This is the, uh, well, I'm going to say it because it's been said a million times and it's so corny, but it kind of feels good to say. It's the new bug out killer from mm, Hogue. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So it's uh, basically in the same wheelhouse uh in terms of size and weight, it's a little bit heavier. Well, here, uh, th- so the Deca, it's a beautiful clip point blade. Well, I'll, I'll get to this uh, little critique in a second. It's a beautiful clip point blade. You can also get it in a uh, compound ground worn cliff. Three and a quarter inch blade. It's got the able lock that's ambidextrous bar lock enhanced. So basically, uh, good access lock, better access lock. It comes in at 2.3 ounces, which is very, very light. It's not quite the 1.85 of the bug out, but this also has G10 handles and G10 is a little denser and heavier than the GRN that comes on the bug out. And it's got CPM 20 CV steel, 20 CV over the 
10 year old or more S30V that they have on the, um, on the bug out. S30V is a fine steel. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But, uh, you know, things have moved on and people are now charging a premium for premium steels instead of a premium for old premium steels. So I think Hogue is very competitive with this DECA and it's only $15 more than the, um, Bug, bug out. out. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, a lot of That's words. what they call a senior moment. <laughs> it's true. I'm like, lots of words just came out of my mouth. <laughs> but, but the DECA to me, I, I, I think it's going to be a big hit. It's got a uh, really cool kind of wide checkered milling on the G10 handle. The, the, it comes in there G Mascus. They have layered G10 with different colors and then the way they sculpt into, you know, three dimensionally into the G10, it reveals all the different colors and it looks kind of like Damascus steel or Timascus, except it's in the G10 format. So I don't know. I've seen a number of uh, my favorite guys reviewing this thing and it looks like a cool knife. I got to say uh, a couple of little nitpicks. Uh, they have a scooped out pocket, a milled out pocket into which the deep ride pocket clip fastens which i like because it puts the um it puts the mounting base of the pocket clip on the same level as the g10 so it's not scraping up over your pocket but the thing i don't like about it is on the left side they also give you a pocket and then they fill it with a with a tab kind of like on a hinderer xm18 and i just don't like it it just looks like extra to me and uh so that's just totally an aesthetic critique on my point and then the other critique i have is well I'd say maybe five to ten years ago, I would have loved the jimped thumb ramp on this. There's a thumb ramp that continues off of the handle with jimping, and then the rest of the blade kind of occurs after a dip. And I don't like that so much anymore because it restrains where your thumb goes to that thumb ramp period. And if you want to ride up on the... uh on the blade at all with your thumb for extra pressure, you have to kind of get beyond that little step down. So it's just a limitation that I don't like, kind of like an over overly contoured handle kind of reduces your options for grip. I kind of feel the same way about that thumb ramp on the top of the very attractive DECA clip point blade. Well, what do you think about the uh, the DECA? Is it a bug out killer? Let us know your thoughts. Call the listener line or uh, shoot Bob an email. We'd love to hear from you about what you're thinking about the Hogue Knives DECA. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. You know, what better way to start building an online store than to just jump right in? But, you know, maybe you're not a web developer or designer, or maybe you just hate installing and updating e-commerce plugins on popular website builders that aren't really made for online stores. Maybe you're looking for a way to get more e-commerce tools built into and connected to your website. After all, with better tools at your fingertips, the more efficient your business can become and the more profits that you can make. That's why it's a smart decision to use a dedicated e-commerce platform for your online store. Of course, picking the right software can always be a hassle with a lot of second guessing as you to try to determine which platform is best for you. That's why we're glad that we can offer Knife Junkie listeners a 15-day free trial of 3D Cart with no credit card required. You can use the time to create your website with the easy-to-use, customizable online store builder, get a taste of the inventory management feature, decide which plan your business needs, and more. With the risk-free trial, you get hands-on experience with the most feature-rich e-commerce website builder and find out how easy it is to start creating the perfect online store for your business. Just go to thenifechunky.com slash 3D trial. That's the number three, the letter D, trial, theknifejunkie.com slash 3D trial. All right, Bob, as we uh, continue on with the Knife Junkie podcast, kind of some personal experiences this week. And uh, I don't know if uh, some of your family is going to get the early scoop on what you were thinking about getting them for Christmas, but uh, you wanted to talk yeah. about Italian switchblades. Yeah, uh well, I guess the cat's out of the bag, but I was going to say, <laughs> Dad or Vito, if you're listening, tune out. Yeah, for a couple of minutes. Yeah, just tune out. So my brother and I always get each other knives and those kind of cool items for, for Christmas and birthday. 
And this year, I know that uh, where they live, thanks to Doug Ritter and knife rights, switchblades and automatic knives are now legal. So he's very excited about that. I asked him, you know, I told him, you're getting an automatic knife. What would you like? Traditional or, or, you know, microtech? And he's like, traditional. He wants something like an Italian switchblade. And I know he loves the swing guard switchblade, but I got to say, Vic, if you're still listening, uh, they don't have those right now. I just really couldn't find any swing guards. But I found a couple of Frank B uh, Italian stiletto switchblades. So I got them and uh, I've been, I don't want to say playing with them or breaking them in, but you know, I've been making sure that they're up to, up to standard. Functioning properly before you give it as a gift. Exactly. Thank you. And, uh, I've found a couple of things. Uh, they're very solid. They're built very, uh, very much like the sort of tourist switchblades I bought in Europe in the eighties and my brother also bought and my parents had bought for me over the years. They're just built like that, just a lot stouter. They have actual beautiful real materials. Like I bought one that has actual stag. It's gorgeous stag. And the other has cocobolo, uh, wood. The uh, kind of tourist uh, pieces I had from the eighties had simulated versions of those. Um, they, unlike, uh, like a microtech or a protech, a modern manufactured automatic knife using modern techniques and modern materials, these knives have differing blade springs. One of them fires out. The one I got from my dad fires out nice and hard. The one I got from my brother might take a little more panache, if you will, a little more savvy to get it to open perfectly every time. So these are interesting because they're handmade um, and they're handmade in a traditional way. So each one is a little different, even though they're, you know, they they have the same specs and the same measurements. Um, there's a there's a marked difference between the two of them. The fit and finish, they both actually uh, have great lockup, and uh, which which was unexpected to me. And uh, great action is just, you know, spring tension is different and little other things are different. So mm-hmm. it's uh, interesting. These are Frank B. I want to try the AGA Campolin. Those are, that's another famous Italian switchblade brand. But if you need to know what I'm talking about, they look kind of like the switchblades that, you know, James Dean carried in, in Rebel Without a Cause, that kind of thing. Well, maybe if you haven't uh, wrapped them up yet with the, the bow and the ribbon and everything all around them, maybe we can uh, grab a quick picture and put it on the uh, the show notes page for uh, this episode of the podcast. That's a good idea, and I'll tell them not to look yet. <laughs> but <laughs> That's but, right. But another thing I wanted to mention, Jim, uh, um, another marked difference between these and the tourist versions of these, the blades. The blades are beautifully ground on these. They're not super sharp, but... It, it wouldn't take much to make them so. They're very nicely ground, uh, as opposed to the sort of full flat ground stamped blades on the uh, on the tourist things I have from the 80s. Well, again, if we can get some of those pictures and other resources and uh, links to the stories we covered in Knife Life News, all of that, that'll be on the show notes page at thenifejunkie.com slash 69, thenifejunkie.com slash 69. And Bob, what would Christmas shopping be without... Shopping for yourself. Well, Jim, I was on Amazon and uh, I had a cart going. I, I was picking up some some Christmas gifts for people. And, uh, you know, that Amazon algorithm just has me nailed, you know. And they're like, hey, I see you're, you know, spending money and you look serious. I think you're about to, to, to press buy. What about the Topps FDX 66? And what do they do? They parade a $40 affordable little tops fixed blade in front of me and ask if I want to just throw that in the, in the bin before I, I purchase. And of course Why I said, not? <laughs> <laughs> of course I said, I'm offended. You know, I'm not just some robot. You can't, I'm not just sure I'll take it. And uh, so I, I put it in and I got it, you know, because it's research. So I got to say this FDX 66, if you don't know what this is, it's a little three finger at most fixed blade. But it's got a super deep choil finger groove pocket thing for your index finger. So you really lock in there. It's kind of like a Perrin uh, knife design uh, where it, it almost doesn't matter how long the hand or how short the handle is because of how locked in your forefinger is. So this one uh, gives you about uh, three finger grip and that deep pocket. And then it's got about a two and a half inch, very broad Tanto blade. And what you get out of having a very broad but short tanto blade is a lot of cutting edge. 
because you have the primary edge and then you have the terminating edge that leads to the point. And since it's so broad, each one of those is long. So it ends up being about a four, almost a four inch cutting edge on a, on a two and a half inch blade. And it rides in this beautiful little, uh, thin, but very stout leather kind of slip sheet. And it fits in your pocket. You can have it, you know, carry this nice fixed blade in your pocket or very discreetly rides on a, a, your belt. It doesn't print, you know, it just, it's just sitting there sideways or you can also run it vertically and that would be a little more conspicuous, but it's just a great little knife. The thing is, it's a piece of steel. It doesn't have a handle. It doesn't have handle scales. So I'm sure tops would make them for you because they have other, other models in this, uh, line. And, uh, so I'm sure you could get handles for it, but if not, I have mine wrapped in paracord and it works great. Okay. Well, a happy Merry Christmas to yourself. Well, thank you. It's the top <laughs> FDX 66. It's not new. I think it's just something that's been in their catalog for a while. It's something I never would have even considered unless, uh, you know, if Amazon hadn't so kindly pointed it out to me. Well, speaking of our friends at Amazon, a great way that you can help support the Knife Junkie podcast is uh, using our link to go shop on Amazon, theknifejunkie.com slash shop Amazon, theknifejunkie.com slash shop Amazon. We will get a very small commission, but it does not affect the price that you'll pay. It just helps us uh, pay for all the uh, web hosting, audio hosting, all the other different tools and resources and things that we use to produce the podcast. So, uh Thanks in advance for using the knifejunkie.com slash shop Amazon link. And Bob, you wanted to kind of wrap up the show with uh, some thoughts on your your first week or so carrying a couple of different knives, the yep. Roxy 4 and the Gatano. So two, yeah. two, two new knives for you, I guess. Yeah, lucky enough to, uh, to get these two knives recently. Um, uh, I'll talk first about the Roxy 4 by We. You know, I had... Uh, I had its designers, Seth and Terrell Todd, of uh, uh, the Todd brothers of Todd Knife and Tool. You know Terrell is Zelric42, a famous, famous YouTube critic and reviewer of knives. Anyway, uh, the two of them are knife nerds uh, times a billion, and they, they have created some incredible knives. I can say that they're incredible because I have one in hand right now, and it hasn't left my pocket in a week. It's the We Made... Well, it's, it's a Wii. It's not under their own brand. It's a Wii Knife Roxy 4. And you can see their, uh, their maker's mark on the opposite side of the, on the lock side of the blade. But this is a, like a space aged sax knife. It's got a beautiful Warncliffe blade. I mean, I just love this Warncliffe blade. It's, uh, it's got all the utility of the nice long straight edge. It's almost perfectly straight. The Todd brothers will point out that it has a slight upward curve towards the tip, but I mean, it's very slight and it's got a nice pointy tip. It's got that downward slope towards the blade from the spine is the perfect angle for me personally, because you can stab with it. It's got that penetration uh, power, uh, but the rest of the, the knife is, uh, it's got a sort of futuristic design to it. It's incredibly comfortable in hand. It's got great action. S35VN is great steel and it, you know, no one has any problem with that. And it, it's so it's this incredible Wii build. And the funny thing is, Jim, is that I was just, uh, two weeks ago saying, yeah, I think, you know, I'm going to sell off most of my, my Chinese knives and kind of start veering back to more, uh, you know, American ground. But then after speaking with the Todd brothers and then, uh, as you know, Terrell was on Thursday Night Knives last week. They're Americans, and they're designing some incredible knives, and they just happen to be being manufactured overseas. So um, I'm thrilled to have this knife. I think uh, I think I want more of their knives. They have the new Shodan from Best Tech, and then they have the Malware from Best Tech, which looks kind of like a, a slender younger cousin to the Roxy 4. And uh, I'm just excited about the knives they're designing. And, uh, you know, they have a beautiful blend of futuristic with usable. Uh, I just didn't. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned uh, Zelric 42, Terrell Todd. You said he was a special guest co-host with you last mm -hmm. week on uh, Thursday Night Knives. That was the December 11th uh, episode that you can find on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Or just go to thenifejunkie.com slash live. You'll find the uh, 
Uh, when we go live, you'll be able to see it there live, but you'll also find an archive of the past shows on that page, uh, theknifejunkie.com slash live. Yeah, we get into it a little bit because uh, I had just gotten this knife and was so excited mm-hmm. about it. And uh, we talk about this knife for a while and, and uh, also the Shodan and just the design process and the philosophy that in that went into making these knives. And to right. look at it, the Roxy 4 doesn't look incredibly comfortable, but when you hold it in your hand, it's amazing. It feels great. Mm-hmm. Well, let's not uh, slight slight the Gatano. Let's uh, uh-huh. give you some equal time to talk about that one. No slighting the Gatano whatsoever. So I have a couple of Lion Steels. Uh, uh, some, a couple of my Bastinellis are made by Lion Steel. And so I know them to be a great knife company, but I n- never really had anything under their own banner. And then uh, the Gatano came out. That's uh, their recent uh, Navaja-inspired slip joint. Had it in a in a couple of different carts on a couple of different websites for a couple of months, and then I finally pulled the trigger. And this, oh my god, this thing is amazing! If you're a slip joint lover, and if you like big slip joints, just get this knife. And if you need to sell it because you don't like it, you can sell it. But I guarantee you're gonna love this knife. So for me, the main draw is the styling. How beautiful it is! The the shape of that ever ever deepening belly on that. Uh, navaja shaped blade and then it's got that handle that tapers off into a little knob and uh, it just fits perfectly in hand it's a big enough blade to be used as a food knife you know this i like to use slip joints as steak knives if they're long enough but also uh, you could pull this out and use it for a number of different chores because it's long enough the other quality about this thing is it's not a locking knife but the spring on this is so stout that unless you're doing something really forceful, you are not going to get this thing to fold on your hands. Hmm. So uh, opening it, oddly enough, it it opens easily, but then closes very hard. Hmm. It's very difficult to close it. I mean, you know, very difficult on the scale of non-locking knives. So all in all, pleased with the Gatano. Very pleased. And then uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it has a pocket clip, and that's been a huge part of, why I love to carry this knife because uh, this can ride in my back pocket now without incident. Uh, in other words, I don't want this like flopping around in my front pocket, but I can clip it to my back pocket and it, it goes great. So I, I'm, I'm really thrilled with this knife and Jim, I got it in this olive wood handle, but now I'm like, Hmm, they do have it in green micarta also. <laughs> well, Christmas is almost here. Yeah, I know. I'm being ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that was interesting. Uh, back pocket knife. So let's see. You've got the primary knives that are in your right front pocket. Is that mm-hmm. correct? Yeah. And then your secondary knives in your left front pocket. So is this a tertiary knife? Yes. This. Okay. So the <laughs> in the back pocket. So the because let's n- let's not forget the neck knife and the well, blah, yeah. blah 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 <laughs> keychain knife. Well, there's usually something in my waistband, and the one in my front left pocket is either there or in my front back po- or, or in my left back pocket. I never, I rarely have one in both. So you rarely have ten knives on you at one yes, time. Maybe only, maybe only nine. eight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. A lot of good, uh, good stuff there in this episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Interesting to kind of get your, uh, your thoughts too on a couple of the, the knives here that you said the, uh, the Roxy 4 and the Katano after kind of a week or so of carrying them and, and getting those, uh, initial thoughts to make sure that they, uh, matched up with your thoughts about wanting to get them in the first place. Yeah. And plus, uh, they make a great carry combination because the Katano, uh, the Katano looks so traditional. And the uh, Todd Brothers, uh, the Roxy 4, looks so futuristic. So together, they mm-hmm. make a great co- uh, contrasting pair. Like pairing fine wine and cheese. <laughs> Spoken like a true nerd. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any final thought from the Knife Junkie as we wrap up this midweek supplemental issue? Uh, well, I would say um, definitely uh, now that I have this Lion Steel in hand, they have a wide variety of modern slip joints in sort of traditional patterns that now I'm I'm kind of really keeping an eye on. So take a look at Lion Steel if you're into slip joints and maybe you've been resisting the modern slip joint pull. Well, take a look at it. The, you might be pleasantly surprised. And remind you that uh, this Friday, December 20th, is the deadline. We need to hear from you. 
Either shoot Bob an email at bob at thenifejunkie.com with uh, your thoughts, your Christmas wish list, what you got for Christmas, a knife story, any kind of fun thing. It's our planned holiday edition of the Knife Junkie podcast where we feature you, our listeners. But we would prefer, and hopefully you would, to actually lend your voice to the podcast by calling our listener line and leaving a recorded message, 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. And let us know any kind of thing you want to tell us, uh, any kind of story, any kind of thing you want to record. But again, use it as an opportunity to uh, give your name, give your website, promote your Instagram account, your uh, your business website, whatever you would like. Uh, shoot Bob an email or call the listener line and let us know. Again, Friday, December 20th is the deadline to get those in. So for Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie Person. I want to thank you for joining us for this edition of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.